How many of you listened to fairy tales when you were little? We had a concert once in Boston. It was called First Times and Forgotten Toys, The Bittersweet Stories of Our Childhood. And we each gave ourselves the task to create a story out of our childhood. And I don't know about you, my first response was, nothing interesting ever happened to me. <laughs> and then I started just making lists, because we'd made the commitment to create these stories. And after making these lists and thinking about what had really been important, it dawned on me that stories, when other things aren't working in your real life, you still have stories to model yourself from. So I'm going to begin with one of those. It's called, My Name is Judy, and I don't do it like me now. I do it like me a long, 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 really long time ago. Let me find her. Hi, my name's Judy. And this is my most special place in the whole world. Well, actually, it's my number two most special place in the whole world. Because my number one most special favorite place is outside, underneath the charcoal grill, and me and my best friend, Puff the Magic Dragon. And I'll never not be his friend like Jackie Paper. We fight the pirates on the great black gravel sea. That's the driveway. Yeah? Yeah? OK. You hear that voice, sort of like scratching glass? That's my mom. She's what we call on the war path. Because you see, I'm up here in my room, and I'm doing my number two most favorite thing, and it's listening to my story record of the sleeping beauty. It is excellent. A man makes all the words of the story, but the music makes it too. It's by a very famous man. His name is T. To Tchaikovsky. Well, I know he's real good because he writes too for TV cartoons. <laughs> Sometimes the music, it's beautiful. It's like long lines up in heaven. Sometimes it's scary, like scratching glass. It's about a mom and a dad, a king and queen, and they wanted a baby more than anything in the whole world. So they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed until one day a frog jumps in the mommy's tub and goes, Well, I bet you're going to have a bye bye. <laughs> That is how it happens. <laughs> and the mommy had the baby. And they were the happiest mommy and daddy in the whole. Yeah! No, mommy! No! I'm sorry! I did my bestest. That voice like scratching glass again. My mom's so mad at me because I didn't clean up good. I did my bestest. Just my hands don't work good like hers. She makes things look like they've never been used before. But when I'm dancing, when I'm dancing to the Sleeping Beauty, my hands work excellent. They could be like birds or like butterflies. No, Mikey. No, I am not elephantine. You get out of here, you bum. That's my big brother, Mikey. He don't appreciate good dancing. I mean, if a ballet man came and saw me, he'd know how good I am, because I play every single part. I play the daddy king and the mommy queen, and the baby they're so happy to have. They're so happy to have this baby, they decide to make a giant party, and they're going to invite all the most specialist fairies in the whole kingdom. But see, here's the problem. There's 13 most specialist fairies, and there's only 12 most specialist gold dishes. But the number 13, she's like a juvenile delinquent or something, so they don't invite her anyway. And they make the party. And it is excellent. Yeah? OK. All right. Yeah, one minute, Mommy. I got to go downstairs and have a conference with my mom. Don't go nowhere. I'm going to come back and tell you more, OK? Here I come. My mom and I, we went shopping today and to see the clicking doctor. I call him the clicking doctor because every time I stand on the scale, he goes <laughs> <laughs> My mom was showing me where the carrot and celery sticks are. And it means I have to hide my ice cream behind the curtain every time she comes downstairs. 
My mom, she's always looking at me and saying, Shama Feldman and Mallory Mullen are such pretty girls. You could be a pretty girl if you lost some weight. If you stood up straight, if you lost some weight, if you kept your hair out of your eyes, if you lost some... Well, after the clicking doctor, we went to the Newman store. It's on the other side of Murray Avenue, and there was a dress in the window that I wanted badder than any dress in the whole world. It had a big pink skirt with lots of petticoats and long pink arms with little lace at the end. My mom said it wasn't quite right for my body type. I had to get brown and white stripes up and down, up and down, up and down. But look, 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 look. When I'm dancing, when I'm dancing to the Sleeping Beauty, anybody looking at me, they'd say, look at her. She's prettier than Mallory Mullen. She's prettier than Sherma Feldman. Anybody looking at me would know that I Oops, am a real lie. They make the party for the baby. And all the most specialist fairies come. And each one gives her a gift. They give her the gift of niceness, and the gift of kindness, and the gift of chubbiness. That's very important to keep warm in the winter. And they give her the gift of personability. And after the number 11 fairy give her gift, then the number 13 comes. She is so mad. <clears throat> I am so mad because you didn't invite me to the party for that baby. See that baby? She's going to die. Prick her finger on a spindle when she reaches 15 and die. No, Mikey. No, it wasn't funny. No, it wasn't even hysterical. Will you get out of... <laughs> Let me tell you guys what my brother did. Is this going to make a bad sound if I walk in front of it? <laughs> it is? I'm going to be over here then. Ha ha. Let me tell you what my brother did. You knew I was going to pick on you because you're so cute. My brother calls me downstairs yesterday, and he gets the whole family in the TV room. Like, do you guys have TV rooms? I'm talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, like, real intellectual people from New York don't, but the rest of us all do. And so the whole family is down in the TV room, and my brother gets everyone there, and he points at me, and he says, your epidermis is showing. <laughs> well, I look to make sure nothing bad's sticking out. But he keeps pointing at me and saying, it's showing. And I checked to make sure my zipper was up. And he keeps pointing, and I started to cry. Do any of you guys know what epidermis is? What? Yeah. Boy, you're smart. <laughs> you're also a lot nicer than my brother. He goes, it's a fancy science word for skin, dumb head. Well, I didn't think it was so funny, Mikey. Like, it wasn't funny what that number 13 fairy did. But the number 12, she's hidden behind this low wall. And she jumps out and goes, ah, that was bad. I can't make it all go away, but I can make it not so bad. See this baby? Sorry, folks, you're going to have to prick her finger. But she won't die. Instead, she's going to sleep for 100 years. But the daddy king says, no way, Jose, that's my baby. I love her. She's not going to sleep. She's not going to die, because I'm going to have every spindle burned down. And he did. <laughs> and the baby grew up to be strong and kind and extremely personable until her 15th birthday. Hey, yeah. Yeah? OK, one minute. Look, I got to go downstairs and eat my dinner, but I'm almost done with the story, so you won't go, OK? I'll be right back. Here I come! We got report cards today. <laughs> School isn't my best subject. <laughs> my brother Mikey works hard. Me, like the check mark says, need improvement, need improvement, need improvement. I used to think that if you used the pencil of a really smart kid, you'd get smart answers. <laughs> Did you try that? <laughs> Didn't work for me. 
there, there are these three reading groups in our school. Shona Feldman is in the Robins, and Mallory Mullen is in the Blue Jays. Pigeons. <laughs> My mom, she thought it was this thing called retarded. They call it special needs now. So she took me to a place called the Board of Education with like a million trillion steps and a man with real thick glasses so his eyes look like fish eyes behind them. And he says to me, now Judy, do these puzzles and tests. And I did them all and when I'm done, my mom goes, well, is she retarded? He said that I wasn't exactly retarded, but that I was this thing called slow. Nobody cared if the Sleeping Beauty was smart, because she had personability. And everybody loved her for that. We love you, Sleeping Beauty. I love you too, Mom and Dad. We are going to visit some people. Then we will come back and celebrate your 15th birthday. Farewell, farewell, farewell. And I went dancing all around the kingdom, being nice and kind and extremely personable, till I seen it. A tower like I never seen before. And the music is pulling me there, like scratching glass. And I go in the bottom door and up and around and around. And I see a little old lady working on a machine like i never seen before. I say, excuse me, ma'am, what's that? It's a spindle, dear. Would you like to try it? Yes, if I might. I'm sorry I scared you, but see, I'm not dead, it's okay. Because if you come by, you can see my little nose going in and out and I'm still breathing. And guess what? Everything fell asleep with me. The, the, the fly on the wall in the tower and all the people in the kingdom and my mom and dad, the king and queen and, and, and the cook and the fire under the cook stove. And everything fell asleep with me. And a vine twine green blanket grew all around us. And it got thicker and thicker and thicker. And a lot of people heard that a princess with personability was sleeping in there. And they tried to get through, but the rose prickers ouched them to death. Until a long, 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 long time passed. And the son of a real king came riding up. And the vine twine blanket just went Chah. And the music pulled him like long lines from heaven to the tower where I was. And he came and went up and up and up. And he saw me lying there. Now, I can only guess that 100 years in his lips came exactly at the same time because he leans over and Excuse me, you didn't ask for that kiss, but I will get back to you later. I gotta go wake people up. And I went down dancing all around the kingdom. I woke up the birds and the butterflies. And then I woke up my mommy and daddy, the king and queen. And then I woke up my brother who kissed my hand. And then I woke up the cook who gave me cake. And then I woke up everybody. And we started dancing in a circle. And the music got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the prince comes and he bows and he says, will you dance with me? I say, you bet. And me and the prince were dancing and dancing. And he goes, I love you. I go, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one minute, mommy. And the prince says, I love you. I go, I know. He goes, sleep. Yeah. Yeah, mommy. Yeah, I know we have to have a, a, a conference about report cards. Just one more minute. The prince says, I love you. I know. He says, sleep. Yes. Yes, mommy. Yes. This young lady will come downstairs this instant. No. I'm not doing nothing so Im <laughs> Princess, sleeping beauty, I love you, will you marry me? I say, Prince, you're on. Me and the prince, 
we get married and we live happily ever. Hey, mommy! Oops. Now I'll come. So the next time you yell upstairs, what are you doing there? They might be saving their own lives. <laughs>